What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is Codexual, and today we're going to be talking about do you have good signals going into your lines? Now, this video applies to DSL customers, CenturyLink, AT&T, Verizon. Yes, they still do um, DSL. So if your company does dsl the digital subscriber line and this video applies to you even though that i'm using this modem here with centurylink is for an example it's the only modem that i have that is dsl related so you want to check with your manufacturer to find out where your settings are to find out where the SN snrs are signal to noise ratio the attenuation the power levels etc um so i just don't know the exact pathway on your specific modem but this this is just a general idea or the generalization of all DSL products. Okay, so if we can do one simple thing is to subscribe to us the channel, hit the like button, hit the post notifications. You'll be notified on on your phone or on an email that I will go live or that I'll upload a video, something similar to this, and you'll be notified. Now, if you see me live stream, feel free to say what's going on. And uh, if you have any technical questions, feel free to ask. That's what I'm here for. I love helping out people as much as I can. All right. So let's uh, get that out of the way. Everything in the description will be posted for you so you guys can reference or if you guys any need any resources, definitely check the description. So let's go to our uh, modem here. And if you have CenturyLink, awesome. This will work for you. Um, again, um, I don't know what your product is, what you have. So you could have like... Um, Netgear, just uh, check with your manufacturer. So I need to type in the password because it kicked me out. A couple of things I do want to cover is our noise margin. Let me bring that over here. Our noise margin and the errors. So those are the things that we're definitely going to cover and why it's important for you to know. So let's go ahead and move this to the right. So once we go to our modem, modem status, and it's gonna be in our DSL status. So the things that we are looking for is the SNR, the attenuation, and the power. And we're also gonna be looking for CRC errors, FEC errors, and HEC errors. So let's start off with what's primary important. So SNR is a noise, um, signal to noise ratio. And I'm letting you know, the higher the number, the better. So if you have six, six is the bare minimum. Six will do the job. If it's below six, you're good. There's, there's a wiring problem. So always check if your DSL cable or if your modem or the wall jack or the interior wiring inside your home and the NID um, is, you know, is awesome. Just like there's no cuts or anything like that. If I were to bring up a illustration here, um, as I just referenced towards two, so here's your modem, then the wire that's connected to the home and the wall jack and the interior walls. It's connected to the service box outside in the area where everyone's getting their service. It's called a DSLAM, D-S-L-A-M. Then it's connected to the SO, the central office, wherever your ISP is giving you that internet. So basically it's other known as an aggregator um, slash radius, that's where the whole server's at, but uh, something that I would reference. And in between that house is called a NID. It's outside of your home. It's a network interface device, and that's what's routing from the POTS lines. Yes, I said POTS because that is a, um, it's a phone line where you can dial from your home phone. It's POTS. So anyways. Let's go ahead and move this to the side. What is important to you to know is if it's six or above. So we're going to pretend that this is six, even though it's zero, because I don't have DSL, I have uh, cable. But um, if this is six or above, then you're golden. If it's below, then you have a wiring problem somewhere. So as for your attenuation, um, so this is a little brief down is of the... The lower the number, 
So if it's 20 or below on your attenuation, the better. So if it's 50 dB above, it's bad. So right here is the range. So anywhere between from zero to, um, I, I would say 45 respectfully, then you're okay. So that's for your attenuation. As for your power, uh, there wasn't something that was um, briefed down to it. But I will have a link for references down below. Okay, so let's um, move on towards our HTC, uh, HEC, CRC, and FEC packet errors. So let's start off with FEC. Ah, uh, where is that? So Intel Communications Information Theory and Coding Theory forwarding correct or forwarding error correction or channel coding is a technique used for controlling errors in data transmission over unreliable or noisy communication channels. So in English, what that means is let, let's let's start off with this theory. And this is what I always told my customers when I did work for a ISP company for a DSL company. So FEC error basically is you work at Applebee's, right? And you are a new waiter or waitress. Now you have customers come in and they order something and you're feeling really confident and you got the order written down. You go to the chef, the chef makes the food, you bring back the order to the customer and the customer's like, hey, I did not order this. And you know, hey, I apologize. I, what was the order again? So the customer clearly tells you, this is my order. So basically in that metaphor, on the, whenever you are on the computer and for Netflix or if you're gaming or something, it's sending the request to the servers and it's not coming out right. So it's sending that request again until it gets it correctly. So that's in basic English. So now back over in the nerdy terms, how it um, transmit over unreliable or noisy communication. Basically, you'll start seeing errors generating if there's errors on the line. So always keep out for errors on the line. Basically, you will see it right here for the errors packet or it'll say FEC errors. And if it starts generating rapidly, then there's a little bit of a problem, but FEC is still fixable errors. What you need to work about is the non-fixable error, which is CRC. So it's sending in that request, but in return, it's getting rubbish. It's not, it's not communicating clearly. So the, excuse me, I, I can't pronounce that. Um, I, I'm part of stupid. So forgive me. Um, CRC is an error detecting code commonly used in digital network and storage devices to detect accidental changes in raw data. Blocks of the data entering the systems get short checked value attached based on the reminder of the polynormal, I can't pronounce that either, forgive me, uh, division of their contents. So basically if you have this error and it's generating rapidly of packets and packets and packets and packets. That's a problem. CRC errors are not good. You don't want CRC errors. The less, I mean, there'll be some packets generating, that's fine. But if you keep seeing packets generating, then there's a huge problem. So if you are experience of buffering or slowness of any sort, you want to check if you have a CRC error or if you have below the 6 dB on your SNR or if your attenuation is really high. So that's how you check out your line status. And again, I'll keep all of these um, in links below so you guys know what where it's referenced at and you guys can learn a little bit more. So I hope that this video was informative and i hope to see you guys in the next video please do me that favor slap a like subscribe to the channel it really does help out what's a sub to you you know anyways i hope to see you guys in the next video and y'all take care peace what's up yeah i'm back on my shit again chasing benjamins run it till the very end yeah every day i'm feeling great better than the day before and you can see it on my face smiling with my glasses on like i'm blind to all the hate i can see all of you